Hi guys, it's Jeff at Slavens Racing. This video is about how to install a moose. So we're using a Bridgestone um, X30 front, one of my favorites, and a Nitro Moose Soft. So I'm, I haven't used mooses for years. I've never really been a big moose fan. I really prefer the tubeless, but I want to test one of these new soft mooses and see how it works out. So I've got my good buddy Tracy here with me. He's going to show you how to lube it up and get it inside the tire. So go right ahead Trace whenever you're ready. So this is just some silicone lube. Uh, the mooses also come with a lubricant. I don't think they come with enough. So if you can buy a moose you should probably buy an extra tube or two of this. Of the moose lube. That, or you can we also sell this silicone stuff, but I recently discovered it's been discontinued, so I'm going to try to find a different source for that, but, but anyhow. Uh, silicone lube or the regular lube that comes with them, either one's fine. And you just need to get you know a good layer of it all the way around. And the lubricant is one of the key things to keep mooses lasting a long time. If they're dry, if they become dry, then they get a lot of friction and a lot of heat, and then that starts destroying the moose. Um, you know, it will self-destruct. And um, the moose size, you know, they just start getting lots, when they get hot like that, they, they start shrinking basically from all the friction and the heat. So you always want to make sure you uh, keep them lubed and we're going to go over another little trick at the end of the video on how to do that without taking them off. And okay so that's the end of this phase right here. You can see that one in there pretty slick. You know if you haven't done it before you, you might want to have a helper because it's kind of like wrestling a grease pig sometimes. Uh, different ones uh, just depending on the tire and stuff they go in a little bit easier or harder. So uh, we'll move on to the tire changing stand. So after you've got the moose installed in the tire, then you should just take some of the silicone lube or the moose lube and rub it around the bead. So it just makes everything slip on together a lot easier. And do that on both sides. And then you're ready to go to your tire changing stand. Uh, of course you could change a moose on the ground or on a table like this if you had to but it's way easier to do it if you have a you know a stand to hold it. Uh, I think the Rabaconda is by far our most popular one for changing mooses but we have a lot less expensive options available that definitely get the job done for you as well. And those are all listed on our site and I'll list them at the bottom of this video as well so I'll put the links links on there. Alright so now we're going to move over to the stand over here. So now we've just barely started the tire onto the rim and the first thing you do is hook the lower uh, bead of the tire on underneath the rim lock. Make sure you've got that under there well and when you're doing that push down on the rim lock to make sure you really get it hooked underneath the rim lock and then now you're ready to uh, start working your way around. So he's not happy with it. There we go. So We kind of skipped uh, getting it the first side of the bead on here, but we had a little technical difficulty there. But basically, while you're doing this, take your time. And I'd probably say, I mean, I know you guys like to go home, have a couple of beers, and then go out to the garage and start working on your stuff. This might not be a good beer project because it can be a little bit dangerous. When you start getting towards the end here, those tire irons can flip up out of there and hit you in the head if you're not careful. And I've had guys do that, so uh, you might want to even wear some safety glasses or whatever, but be as careful as possible and take it easy. And if you get too aggressive with the tire, with, the, with these big tire irons, these are not real big ones actually. He's showing you it can be done with small tire irons. Um, if you get real aggressive with those, you can break the bead of the tire. So the bead, you know, is obviously this portion right here. And there's steel, there's um, 
steel bands in there. And if you really start wailing on that tire iron, you will break those. And if you break that bead, the tire is junk. It will not stay on the rim. It's totally useless. And at that point, you've just completely damaged a brand new tire. So take your time. If it's not going on, stop and think. Don't just put more muscle into it. I mean, you can see it takes a fair amount of muscle, but those are short tire irons. I mean, I'll show you these. They're, they're not big ones. We do sell some bigger ones. And those are all right to use if you're experienced, but we're kind of going with these shorter ones, just showing you that it can be done and that brute force is not the best thing to do. Now, right here, he's trying to get the bead down into the drop center of the rim a little bit better. The drop center being this hump, hump part of the rim, that's called the drop center. He's pushing that down in there some so that he can have more room on the other side to pull it over. And usually when you really have to start forcing them, that's because it's not in the drop center. And you can't get it all the way down in there like you can with a tube. But uh, he's almost there. And of course, this is the hardest part. So he's pushing in the rim lock to make sure he gets the tire, the, the bead of the tire underneath the rim lock. All right, now he's using that little pry area because that's this, uh, this stand is called a Mike's. We do not sell these. He does not sell them to any retailer. If you want one, they're, they're definitely a damn good stand. Uh, but you got to buy them direct from him. And he doesn't really answer emails or phone calls or anything. It's kind of a weird process, but I'm nothing against him. He's a good guy, makes good products. And um, like I said before, our Rabaconda is by far the easiest one to, to use for, for changing mooses. If you're going to do a lot of mooses, buy a Rabaconda. We do have several other ones in stock that are very popular, um, that are very inexpensive, under $100. And they've got a, a leverage bar on them and all those kind of things. But uh, looks like he's not happy with the rim lock here, so he's working on that a little bit, which, you know, that's kind of good for a video to See that things don't always go perfect. That one's really being kind of a bitch. There we go. There we go. So that's what he wanted. He wanted to get that rim lock push, pushed in as far as he could so he could make sure that the bead of the tire was underneath the rim lock and not on top of the rim lock. And that's basically it. I mean, we're at the end of this. Uh, all you got to do is tighten up the, the rim lock. Check to make sure your bead is popped out all the way around. If it's not, then um, what do you say, Trace? Uh, just push through there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So right there where we put that tape on that hole. <clears throat> Excuse me. Right there you can see we put some tape over that hole. Uh, you can just take a an air gun, one that has a rubber tip on it preferably, and you can blow air, air in there and you can make them pop out. This air gun like I have will not work. You need one with a rubber tip that will seal around the hole. Or like I mentioned before, you can use a, um, oh, what am I trying to say here? Um, an air Schrader valve, Schrader valve, a Schrader valve out of a, they're actually out of street tires. So here he's checking to make sure the beads already popped out and it is. So now we're going to test this, and that will be a, a separate video about testing the, this tire, because I, I know this tire very well, and I want to know uh, how it feels with the moose in it compared to the tubeless. I like to, to uh, do these kind of projects so that I can give my customers uh, quality information about the products that we sell and help them when they're having problems, and hopefully this video will help you with your installation. If you have questions, you're welcome to email us at uh, info at slavensracing.com and uh, I'll put a couple links at the bottom of this video of the different products that we've used here and please join our Facebook channel and our YouTube channel. 
so we can keep in touch with you. That's all for now.